the gospel according to Isaiah. It's an excellent. Uh, oh, and because I get to sing that song by Luther, Isaiah, mighty seer in days of old, the Lord of all in glory did behold. We sang that one too, right? Okay, um, Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. Now Jesus says in Luke that this, that this applies to him. So the me is Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to, pr- to bring good news. What is, what's the gospel? The good news. To the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Okay, so here we have the poor, brokenhearted, captives, those who are bound. That's the audience of the gospel, those who feel their sin. If you don't feel your sin, the gospel's not going to mean anything to you. If you feel it, you're going to need it. Verse 2, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. To, give, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. So the gospel then is for the poor and the sick and the needy. That's who it's for. This is what the uh, meaning of the Beatitudes is. Blessed are the rich in spirit. No, it's blessed are the poor in spirit. That's what Joel Osteen needs to read. (laughs) Blessed are the poor in spirit. That is, those who spiritually are failures, aren't that good. And, you know, this gets frustrating. It's like, Lutherans, really, isn't there a time where, okay, I'll grant you some time for this mourning and repentance and I'm such a bad person thing. And we'll have some testimonials every now and then. And, you know, let everybody know how horrible sinner I was. But haven't we gotten past that now? Aren't we rich in spirit now? Do you have to kneel down every single Sunday and say that you're a poor and miserable sinner? As Joyce Meyer once said, I left the Lutheran Church because I wasn't poor, I wasn't miserable, and I wasn't a sinner. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Now, besides the fact that she's a woman pastor and that's an oxymoron, she, 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 is, she is a bad, bad lady. She's not a good lady. False wolf. Wolf. That's my job. Warn you about wolves. So that, that's what she said, right? So what is it? What, do we, are we constantly just like, you know, like my favorite, my favorite analogy of this is from Monty Python, where you have the monks walking around. Yeah, yeah, and they're like, no, it's with the books. They're like, they're like, uh, P.A. Jesu Domine. This is like they're just banging these, the head, heads. Um, no, that's not, that's, not, that's not the way the life is for the Christian. It's that we are still sinners and at the same time saints. So inasmuch as we are still sinners, what do we need to hear? The law or the gospel? The law. And, in his, and, 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 that, and what, is, what is it that makes us saints? The law or the gospel? The gospel. Right? Not the law. Not our works. Okay. Um, so number three, what should rule a Christian's conscience? Yeah, the gospel should, not the law. The gospel rules your conscience. You're a child of God, and that means everything. I remember one time going to private confession with a pastor. I was totally overwhelmed by, um, by my sins and the way I felt inside about myself, and I just was so aghast at who I was. And the first thing the pastor said when he, when I, after I confessed my sin was, you're a child of, Mark, you're a child of God. That is an absolution. In fact, I wrote three sermons for today because I, that happens sometimes. I just couldn't figure it out. And first I was going to write on whoever receives a prophet uh, as a prophet receives a prophet's reward. And then I was going to write on little children love one another, even though it's not quite in the Bible. But, and I was thinking the word children is an absolution. It's an absolution. God calling you his child is, a, is forgiveness. Um, let's do this law or gospel, all right? So you have to ask these, these, uh, these 10 questions. You guys are going to say either law, is this law or gospel? God wants us all to love each other. Law. Law. It sound, yeah, see, that's a good law. Is that a good thing? Should we love one another? Yeah, but that's not, that's not what saves us. 
If you do this, you will live. Law. Because there's a condition, right? The gospel has no conditions. The law has conditions. Three, come for all things are now ready. Gospel, right? That's the gospel. It's an invitation. Four, Jesus has ransomed us from the grave. Gospel, yeah. Five, if you give your heart to Jesus, then he will enter in. That's the law, right? What does it require of you? To give your heart, you know? That's what it, that's, yeah. Well, can you? I mean, by nature? No, not by nature. <clears throat> um, four, six, your sins are forgiven. Gospel. Seven, God threatens to punish all who break his commandments. Law. We should fear God's anger. Law. It is characteristic of a Christian to do for others as he would have them do to him. That's the law. Yeah. Is that true? Yes, but it's still the law. Ten, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Gospel. Right. Okay, any questions? Yes, Tommy. I was talking about the law and the gospel. Guess what? Guess chicken butt. <laughs> okay, kids, what did you learn about in Sunday school today? Did you learn about Paul? Who, who is Paul? God keeps his promises. What was the story about? <laughs> okay. It was about Paul. Okay, I'll leave it at that. It was about Paul. You learn about the Apostle Paul. Good. All right, we're going to say the fourth and fifth petitions of the Lord's Prayer. The fourth petition. Give us this day our daily bread. What does this mean? God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers, even to all evil people. But we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. What is meant by daily bread? Daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, such as food, clothing, shoes, house, home, wife and children, wife, devout children, devout, devout and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, Peace, health, self-control, good nation, good neighbor, good. I gotta review that. You know, I always mix up the meaning of the first article of the creed and then the meaning of. It drives me crazy. Okay, the f the the s we on the fifth petition now. The fifth petition: Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. What does this mean? In this petition, that God would would not look at our sins or deny our prayer because of them. We are neither worthy of the things for which we pray, nor have we deserved them. But we ask that you would give them all to us by grace, for we daily sin much and sincerely deserve nothing but punishment. So we too will sincerely forgive and gladly do good to those who sin against us. Let's close with the first stanza of Salvation unto us has come. Hymn 555. Actually, verse 10 of Hymn 555. Verse 10 of Hymn 555. Paul, could you pick that up, please? <clears throat> verse 10 of Hymn 555. Let's sing. O oh, blessing, honor, thanks, and praise to Father, Son, and Spirit, the God who saved us by his grace, all glory to his merit. O oh, triune God in heaven above, you have revealed your saving love, your blessed name we hallow. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you. Okay.